You need water to live, but you also need water to run. Well, you're going to want to stay hydrated when running long distances or in hot and humid conditions. Therefore, you're going to need to carry water. But how? Well, I'm going to be covering the various methods of carrying water whilst you run, and then you can decide which is best for you. Well, unlike nutrition, where there's some slightly clearer guidelines as to what fuel you should take on and when, hydration is very personal. It depends on many factors, including your personal sweat rate, how far you plan on running, what conditions you're running in, and of course, how hydrated you are beforehand. Now, if you don't know your current sweat rate or how much fluid you lose when you are exercising and running, well, there is a simple test that you can perform. Simply weigh yourself, without clothes on, before your session and weigh the fluid you intend to take with you. Then after the workout, towel yourself down and weigh yourself again, without clothes on. Subtract your post-exercise weight from your pre-exercise weight. Subtract your post-exercise bottle weight from the pre-exercise bottle weight. Add these values together to find out how much you sweat. Then calculate your sweat rate by simply dividing that number by the time of your workout. But once you've got a rough idea of how much fluid you're going to need on your runs, we can start to nail down your options and how you're going to go about carrying this fluid. So we're going to start with some of the smaller options. Perfect for the shorter runs, we might just need a few sips and we'll work up from there. Well, first up, we've got the good old plastic bottle. Now, I'd advise probably no more than 500 ml plastic bottle, but obviously you can carry as much as you like but be warned, it does get a little bit awkward with these. Now, these come in a variety of different options. Obviously, you've got a good old standard bottle like this one, but more commonly, we see people using the more ergonomically designed bottles with indentations in the sides for the fingers, holes through the middle so you can grip it, or even with straps around the outside. Now, these can often be quite popular with people getting into running, starting out, because it's just a simple, quick and easy thing to buy. It's quite cheap and also, people don't often want to start strapping stuff to them. They can just grab something and head out of the door. And the benefit to this also is the fact that it's in your eye line, you have it in your hand the entire time, so you are reminded to drink and stay on top of your hydration. The downsides, obviously, are that some of these bottles can be quite small, so you're limited on how much hydration and fluid you can take with you. You've got the sloshing noise constantly, you're taking a hand out of action, and personally, the bit that gets me is just that slight feeling of off balance. But of course, you can just swap hands. Well, next up, we've got waist belts. Now, I've got to be honest, this isn't something I used a ton before, but when I have, They've been great, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm probably going to use them a lot more in the future as well. Now, obviously, these come in a ton of different options, sizes, arrangements, and various things like that. And I know Heather likes to use something called a flip belt, which looks like this, but it actually has a bottle that is curved, so it can nicely wrap around your back. It stores around 330 mil, so it's nice and sleek. You barely notice it. You've got a little bit of hydration and fluid for the run. You can also stash away extra little things, some essentials, your phone, and you really aren't going to notice it. Now, this one here I've got on, I've actually got a flask in the front of it, so I'm able to store about 500 mil in there. I've also got another pocket around the back that I could put another 500 mil into on my phone. I can get gels in here. I can even actually get poles on this one for going really extreme. You can also get others that got almost holsters in, so you can put a normal 500 mil bottle in or a flask. In. The options are endless. Now, these are perfect if obviously you want to go hands-free, you don't want anything in your hands, but equally, you don't want to be putting and stashing a load onto your back. And the final one, and this is a big one, is hydration vests. Now, this is my personal preference, something you'll have seen me wearing quite a lot of, which you'll just put on, literally like this. These obviously come in a variety of offerings. You can get some quite small ones with just some small flasks on, all the way through to much larger. Now, whilst they do have the potential to carry quite a lot and be really quite versatile, there is also something to consider here, and that is just that you have got another layer on top of you. So if you're doing a long run or a particularly hot run in the conditions that you are in, you want to bear that in mind. You also want to make sure that it fits well. If there is any slight movement, you're gonna feel that. The rubbing, also you might start to get some slight bruising, but equally, if you get a well-fitted one, you'll barely notice it at all. Well, now with the types, and obviously there are loads of options here, you can get some very small, compact, 
hydration vests that will simply just have a couple of flasks on the front through to very large ones that you can take all sorts of spares and essentials, potentially if you are going up and over mountains so that you make sure that you're fully equipped for that. Now, you can get just these small hard flasks that obviously take up very little space. They're not going to carry as much. And also, as you start to drink the water, you're going to hear it sloshing around a bit. Personally, I really like using these soft flasks like this. You can get about 500 mil into each of these, and you can even store extras in the back. And the beauty of these is as you drink them, they collapse down, they don't slosh around as much, and they take up very little space, and they're very little in terms of their weight. And also, if you just want to drink from them, it's just a simple squeeze bring it up to your mouth like so. You can also get bladders as well. This is something I've used in the past when I've needed to be self-sufficient. I know that I'm potentially not going to have access to water on the go. And you can store anything from 750 mil through to three liters with these. These will be stored in the back and I can actually get one in this one here. And it'll have a straw coming off for easy access. I'll just have it dangling down here. You can grab it and sip. Only issue with these is a, they are slightly hard to refill if you do plan to do that. And also, where I've been caught out in the past is you can't see how much you've drunk and you can find yourself caught out when it starts to run out. And finally, if you really don't want to carry any water with you, well, you are going to have to plan your run accordingly, whether that's having something like this available to you en route or you stash a bottle somewhere en route that you run past, do loops and pick up on the way, run past your house again, doing loops, or even if you're on some sort of adventure, then making sure there's some shops that you can grab some stuff from en route. Anyway, I hope today's video has been helpful to you. If so, please do give it a thumbs up, give it, give it a like. Let us know in the comment section down below what you prefer, how you go about making sure that you stay hydrated on your runs. And whilst you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. Right, on we go. Woo!